Over the past year, I've been having lots of fun streaming coding sessions on Twitch. What, what? We got it working, we got it working. Now I wanted my followers to be able to join the conversation with their voices, not just on chat. So I built a telephone hotline into Twitch and in this video, I'm going to show you how I did it with Twilio, OBS and our friend Node.js. Shout out to our generous corporate overlords Twilio for making this video possible. They've given me a link to hook you up with some Twilio credit to get you started building. Head over to chatterboxcoder.me forward slash Twilio to get an extra $10 of free Twilio credit. But let's get started. You're gonna need three things. A free Twilio account number over at the link I just posted, a Twilio phone number, and the streaming software of your choice. Now, I prefer to use OBS, Open Broadcasting Software, which is really cool, but you can use it with some other streaming software as well. Let me quickly explain how my streaming setup works. OBS captures video from my camera and sound from my microphone and streams that over to Twitch. OBS lets me add overlays called browser sources. These are just web pages built with good old HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Set the background to transparent and voila, we have an overlay. Now all we need to do is figure out a way to take phone calls on a web page. This is where Twilio comes in. We can use the Twilio client JavaScript SDK to take calls on a web page. That means we can take it on our overlay. All good so far, but there's just one problem. It's actually really tricky and fiddly to interact with OBS overlays. You can't really click on them easily. So instead, we can control our phone from another web page. Now, we would have a web page overlay on the stream with our actual phone and an admin panel that only I can see. And these two will stay in sync using WebSockets to communicate over an Express and WebSocket server. To the code editor. Can we speed this up in page production? Before we start, we need to gather all our credentials. Now we're gonna find these in the Twilio console. That's your account SID, which is on the home page. We'll also need to create an API key and secret. And you can go over to the settings page in your console and create a new API key there. Once you've gathered all of your credentials, you may want to store them in a .env file. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can set up environment variables. So check out the link in the description below for a blog post to show you how to do it on your machine. In the terminal, run npm init dash dash yes to set up a new package.json file. Let's also create an index.js file for our server and a public folder that will have our admin.html page and our overlay. Here, I'll install WS, Express, Twilio, and .env to help me handle my environment variables. First, I'm gonna bring in .env so that I can use environment variables, and then I'm going to set up Express and WS so that I can use a HTTP and WS server combined. And we'll set that up to listen at port 3000. And I'll also bring in the Twilio library so that I can use it later. First, let's set up some routes, or routes, as my American friends like to say. The first one will point to our overlay and we'll use the send file method to send that over. We will then set up another route for our admin page. Now we will set up WebSocket connections. So whenever a new client connects, we would like to listen out for messages. And every time we receive a message at the server, we will forward these messages to each of the other clients that are attached to this server. Now I'm going to switch to the overlay.html and set up a basic HTML page with one div and a h1 that says join the conversation on Twitch. And flipping over to the admin panel, we have another basic HTML page, but this time I'm going to put in two buttons. The first one will be an answer button with the ID and the second one will be an end button. Now to bring in Twilio. We'll head back over to our index.js file and set up a post route for Twilio webhooks. We'll set the content type to XML. This is because we're going to return Twimmel, Twilio's markup language. You can check out the docs for more details. What we're going to do is we are going to send a response that tells Twilio to dial to our client. And we're going to give our client the name Twitch Overlay. Don't forget to wrap this in back ticks because we're sending back a string. Next, we need to create another post route so that our client can fetch a token from our server to authenticate with Twilio. 
We'll create a variable to hold our identity, which is Twitch overlay, just like we used above. And then we will use the Twilio library to create an access token. And we'll also be using a voice grant. We'll create a new access token with our environment variables, account SID, API key, and secret. And then we will add our identity to that token, give it a voice grant with permissions to allow incoming phone calls, add that grant to the token and send it back as a JWT or JavaScript web token. Phew, access tokens, it's hard work, but they're actually really important and useful for making sure that your application stays secure. So make sure you follow best practices when you're using access tokens in your applications. Back in our overlay.html file, we'll bring in the Twilio JavaScript SDK via the CDN. Next, we'll write our own script to use it. I'm going to wrap my code in a self-invoking async function. And the reason being is I want this code to automatically run once the page loads in my OBS overlay. We'll start by fetching that token that we set up the route for earlier, and we'll use that token to set up a new Twilio device. We'll also set up our WebSocket connection to our server. I have this handy little trick that lets us grab the host. Once our device is ready, it will log to the console that the browser phone device is operation. All right, so now that we've got our browser phone ready, we need to hook it up to our admin panel using WebSockets so that we can use our admin panel to accept calls and reject them. Just underneath the code we've just written, we're going to use the websocket.onMessage event to listen out for whenever the device receives instructions from our admin panel telling us to answer or reject a call. We'll pass the event data and then we will use the switch statement to figure out what we should do. If the instruction is to answer, we will check the status of the device. If we're waiting for a call that is ringing, we can then accept. We'll add another one for if the case is end. If the status is ringing, we will reject the call. However, if the status isn't ringing, meaning we're already on a phone call at the moment, then we will disconnect it. All right, over in our admin panel, we're gonna set up those WebSocket messages to send over to our overlay. We'll create a new WebSocket connection and then we'll bring the answer button and end buttons by their element IDs. We're going to add listeners for clicks. So whenever a user clicks on the answer button, we will send a WebSocket message that says answer. And we'll do the same thing for the end button. When someone clicks on it, we'll send a message that says end. These are the cases that we had just finished setting up in the overlay. Whew, that was a lot of code, but it's testing time. Now we're gonna hook this up to a Twilio phone number and test it out. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is open a terminal and set up our server. So I'm going to use the command node index.js. Now in another terminal, I'm going to update my Twilio phone number using the Twilio CLI. And I'm going to set the voice URL as localhost 3000. What's really cool about Twilio is if it detects that you're trying to connect it to a local host, it will spin up an ngrok URL for you. And here you can click on this and we can go over to our overlay. One more thing before we test it, we need to go over in Chrome and give our site permission to play audio and use our microphone. We won't need this in OBS because we're going to allow our microphone in a different way. All right, it's time to give our test number a ring. Let's see if it works. Hopefully it rings. It's ringing on my phone. There we go, I can hear it on the computer. All right, now to see if we can click the over there and answer the phone call. Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really it's weird, really weird hearing, hearing myself, myself in, in stereo. stereo. Let's end, Let's end the call. All right, now that we have all the basics that we need, it's time to spin it up in OBS and try it out live on stream. Before browser sources can access our mic on OBS, we need to enable the media streams flag. If you're on Windows, find the executable for OBS Studio, right click and select the properties. In target, you should be able to add enable media streams as a flag and then restart OBS. In OBS, add a new browser source. I'm gonna give mine the name phone overlay and then update the size of it so that it fits the size of your canvas. For most people, that's 1920 by 1080. And then change the URL to the URL that you created with Engrok. 
your overlay should appear on your canvas. Now, what OBS will do is it will set the background to transparent. So whatever you have behind will show up through as well. So after I got it working, I took it for a spin on Twitch to ask some really hard hitting questions. Does COW prefer cake or does COW prefer pie? It's got to be pie, otherwise he's wrong. Oh! You know, it's the same body. It's got to be. It's got to be cake. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Do you say it's got to be cake or it's got to be pie? Well, he's going to get an unfollow if he doesn't say cake. <laughs> and there we have it, folks. Phone calls right there on Twitch. I'll be back next week with another video. And in the meantime, we can't wait to see what you build. Follow me on Twitch at Chatterbox Coder. You know you want it. We got it working. We got it working.